Before I get into this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super, which I'm sure you can tell sounds a little weird, my episode review, that's because I am not in my home office like I normally am when I do these episode reviews. I'm actually in the bathroom of the lobby here at the hotel. Now, why am I in the bathroom of the lobby here at the hotel? And for those of you who don't know, I'm at Megacon. I uh, made a video about this a couple days ago. I'm in the bathroom because the Wi-Fi in the hotel fucking sucks, all right? Let me be blunt with you. So I'm in the bathroom in the lobby to get the best possible signal. And I actually watched this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super from a cell phone stuck in traffic, all right? So I apologize from the beginning, okay? If you hear an echo or whatever, I'm in here. I might take a shit right here when I do the review, all right? Because this episode kind of was shit. All right, I'm going to be real about it. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. So... Let's talk about it then. Dragon Ball Super episode 45, Vegeta ga Kieru, Fukusei Vegeta no Kiyoi, which translates to Vegeta Disappears, The Menace of Copy Vegeta. And by the way, folks, I talked to Ryo Horikawa today, and he told me my Japanese is just fine. So, yeah. Uh, he might not have really said that, but let's just go that he did. So anyways, this episode, I have mixed opinions about this episode. I thought it was annoying at the same time kind of cool and with with this episode it's kind of like how dragon ball is in that dragon ball sometimes well a lot of times has great ideas but bad execution i was happy to see ss3 go tanks again i thought that was cool to see again i thought it was really dumb that ss3 go tanks defused the way that he did after like a minute or two like this is the same problem that I had before where I don't know if Super's just ignoring the 30 minute rule or if maybe Goten and Trunks got so weak I don't know if I believe this this is just the only way it makes sense to me they got so weak that their fusion with SS3 will just die in a minute but that doesn't explain why they defuse so fast in the resurrection FR see I I really doubt they were fighting for 30 minutes, especially since in Dragon Ball Z, 30 minutes was like 10 years, or at least it felt that way. So that bugged me, and it kind of went back to being the Goku show, which doesn't really bother me too much because it actually made sense here. Again, I thought the idea of having a copy Vegeta that's essentially this living ooze, it's like a purple living ooze, right? And it, it's all explained in the episode that pretty much... The, the people on Potafu, the natives, created this ooze, this, this, this purple ooze, and it kind of became a sentient being, so to speak, right? And then what happens is this sentient being got too much power and became evil. That's a great idea. Like, I actually really like that idea. It reminds me of the Pirates of Dark Water from back in the day. Remember that show? I'm sure nobody does. So that was a good idea. Um, but... The execution, the animation was fine. I mean, okay, so basically the episode, the first part of it is Vegeta tries to fight the copy Vegeta and can't do shit. His key attacks aren't working. Copy Vegeta, he can do it. And pretty much it's explained that copy Vegeta is taking Vegeta's essence or his spirit. And Vegeta throughout the episode is losing power. He can't shoot key blasts. He's uh, fading. Very much like Back to the Future. I really like the fact that it was a throwback to Back to the Future when Doc Brown's like, erase from existence. Which is when, you know, if you saw the movie, Marty McFly goes back in time and stops his parents from meeting. His family starts to disappear from existence. They kind of did that here, and I really like that. And the backstory for the water was pretty cool. That's good stuff. And pretty much what happens, just to kind of give you a brief rundown, this is not going to be a long review, is um, go ten, you know, Vegeta can't do anything, so Jocko uses his ray gun to kind of save everybody. And then Goten, Trunks, Vegeta, they all escape. And then the old man there explains kind of what I told you earlier about the water, how the water is, you know, like a sentient being. It's the natives made it and all that. And now, of course, Grill or whatever is using it for, you know, it fell into the wrong hands, right? Typical story. And um, essentially, Goten's SS3 fights copy Vegeta, like I said, does a few cool moves, a few good you know, lefts and rights in this wacky tornado move. There's a lot of good stuff as far as that went, but then Copy Vegeta just pretty much owns his ass. So by this power scaling logic, Vegeta in his base form can defeat SS3 fused Gotenks. I'm sure a lot of you guys are not happy about that because it kind of makes no sense. Let's be real. I mean, I know that Vegeta's got a powerful base form, but does the water also amplify God Key? Like, what the fuck? Like, that doesn't make any damn sense. So Gotenks fails. Goku is sensing what's going on. He teleports there. Goku starts fighting with Vegeta. Turns out that Goku has to defeat Copy Vegeta 
in three minutes or else Vegeta totally disappears. And that's pretty much the cliffhanger. They fight in their base form and that's it. Not a big fan of the episode. Just they're fighting in their base and why is Goku not just going into God form and beating this guy's ass? It's the same problems I've had with Super in the past about how they're holding back, holding back, holding back, holding back when now it's a dire situation because Vegeta might disappear forever. So it's like, take this shit seriously, you know? Wasn't a big fan of the episode. Um, I didn't hate it. There was, like I said, Jocko's moments were amazing. Gotenks SS3 was cool to see again. But I don't know if I'm going to be rewatching this Potafu arc that much in the future. But again, next week is the conclusion of the arc. And then we will see, you know, Trunks finally return. Also, before I close out the review, I just want to say, yes, I saw the Watch Mojo list. I am not going to comment about that on this video. I'll do a separate video commenting on it. And I was happy I made the list. However, there are things about the list that really bugged me. They really, really bugged me. But I'll talk about that separately. So if you're going to leave a comment about the list, I suggest you wait until I do that video. And then leave that comment. Anyways, thanks as always for your support of Geekta 101. I'm over here at Megacon this weekend getting some clips for you guys. And we'll get some videos up. Quaments here as well. So I don't know when the hell his review is going up. But uh, thank you for your support as always of the channel. Spread the word. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, next week I'll be back in my studio. And we'll get a review done with the best quality I can possibly give you. I just wanted to get this out tonight because I'm sure you want to hear my thoughts. So... Thanks again as always. I'll catch you down the road.